Okay. Um, okay. So can we see the whole screen? Yeah, that's good. Great. So uh, thank you very much for uh, Greg and, and uh, STC. I'm sorry, I'm just used to it. And uh, for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to talk about our uh, patented technology. Um, and also I thank Saroji Paul and uh, my friend and for talking about stroke, so make, making my job easier and uh, to talk about the issue. So what, 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 what we are doing and what technology, what we are talking about here is, uh, is a blood-based biomarker for early blood-brain barrier disruption in the skin stroke. So if we look at the team, this is a, this is a study which has been ongoing for 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 uh, 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 for a long time to invest in the basic science world, and we we started with uh, um, with trying to understand that when you have stroke and the blood brain barrier or the blood vessel actually start to disintegrate and uh, having trouble, and uh, so the question. So we have done a lot of a basic science study, but. It is those basic study and science study and understanding lead us to develop a biomarker that's blood-based that indicate the, the severity of the blood vessel damage. So those were the initial studies that were supported by NIH and by American Heart. And now we, we, we since then we, patent, we, we filed for patent and actually overall we have on this technology, we have different variation and different step and we have a fired for, we have received four issued patent on this. And uh, during the process, uh, CTSC has provided a, a pilot project study uh, for us to do some clinical, initial clinical study. And we have uh, applied for NH a clinical study grant, which is pending, hopefully, um, will be, let's hope they'll be funded uh, sometime in the near future. We can carry out the large scale um, clinical study. So. What, what, what is the technology? And uh, talk about a little bit of background and the background as, as Soroji Paul just talk about, you know, we are look, both of us are looking at ischemic stroke. That is when you have a, a blood cloud blocking, blocking the blood vessel and the, the blood supply to a certain region of the brain is stopped. And when that happens, it causes major Essentially, the, the the blood is not is not flowing, and so when you don't have blood, you don't have oxygen in your brain in that region. You don't have the energy, and uh, you have a problem. So that's the, the blood cloud. Now, as again, uh, Sir Paul just mentioned in this today, there are two ways to to deal. There's no drug to, for stroke, but there are two ways to re to remove the uh, blood cloud, either by a drug called TPA, as the surgeon just uh, talk about, and there's another way, is mechanical way. Essentially, it's a, essentially it's almost like uh, the 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 cork screw in your for one bottle, and you you screw it in and pull it out. So that's called thrombectomy. So when you do that, and essentially the blood flow is. Um, the blood flow is resumed and you either use a TPA or thrombectomy. Those are the two only stroke therapy as proved by, NH, by, by T, um, FDA as of today. But the problem, the problem here, the problem is both TPA or thrombectomy can only be used with two patients with a very short time window as such that only less than 10%, even in the US, in the best hospital, uh, those are the approaches are being used. In other words, more than 90% of the patient are not treated. And even for those people who are treated, then there's a tenfold increase of so-called intracerebral hemorrhage or bleeding. And uh, when, you, when that happens, that may cause a half of people will die. So the question is you really want to, you really want to, to use a, some kind of a guideline or diagnostic tool to, to in, or indicator to guide the patient selection so that you can increase the eligible patient and reduce the risky patient. So then why, why, why such a short window? 
and for those two techn two approaches, I can we can show you here that is this is the blood vessel, the blue line, and this this is the blood, and when you have a stroke, you have a blood cloud. Now, then what happens is when the blood cloud is block, blocking the blood vessel, the blood BBB or blood vessel itself start to disintegrate or becoming leaky. So if you actually remove the blood cloud, what happened is the blood in your blood vessel will start to leak out and that's called intracerebral hemorrhage. And that would lead to increased death. So what you really want is, you, what, what, what's needed is a, 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 some kind of a test. You can, you can assess the BBB integrity and if it's damaged, then you do not want to do treatment, you may kill the patient, but, but if, the, if the vessel is intact, then give the patient and then the patient will live a normal life. So what our technology is such that based on, the, based on the, our initial basic and the understanding, basic research is this is the blood vessel that's endothelial cells linked by the type of protein called uh, occluding in this particular case. What happens is when you have a stroke and what happened is a stroke initiated degradation of the linking protein and those were going to the blood. Now, what we do is we develop a technology that's ELISA based to detect the presence of those fragments. And obviously the more of those fragments, the more damage the blood brain barrier is. And therefore, if we just draw the blood from the patient and we know how bad the, the blood vessel damage is, and then decide, use that parameter to decide whether the patient should be should should go for treatment or not, and that would be tremendous useful for clinical purpose. So really, what we want to do is do a large scale clinical study to validate the initial finding we have we have obtained. We have done tremendous amount of animal study, and 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 it's, it it is patented technology with a four pack backed by four patents, and and also we have a, 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 a several dozen publication to support that. And we need to, to develop a, a, a test kit, which is, can be conveniently used and in the clinical lab. So the, the overall idea is that this is, a, this is a point of care diagnostic tool to, for stroke patient, because see, each of us is different. Every patient has a different variation in terms of blood damage. Um, so what we want to use is to, to guide the recanulation really is to kind of uh, removing the, 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 the blood cloud. And what we want is to identify patients who could, could still benefit from those treatment, even though they are beyond the three hours. Currently, they are not receiving the treatment. And they will also identify those patients at the risk of, of hemorrhage or bleeding, even though they are within the three hours as you can see, so that this technology would expand the use and increase the safety and reduce patient deaths. Market analysis, Serge Report did a, a fantastic uh, job uh, uh, the, in terms of analyzing the market. There are, there, are, there are a large number of stroke patients in a million a year. And so the annual uh, test, essentially, if we do a, 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 a even 75% of penetration, you could talking about more than half a million people. Currently, a TPA treatment is, 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 is uh, more than 6,000, and overall, this is billions of dollars. And in comparison, our companion diagnostic, actually, this is a very simple. It probably costs 100 bucks also to, 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 to initiate the test, and this, but in the multi-billion dollar market. Um, so, the question really is, the most important question is, does your study work? And is, is your technology work in the, in the real world? 
And uh, what with the CTSC support, we have done some initial clinical uh, study at UAM hospital. And uh, we look at this stroke patient. And here's what we find is when we take the blood and looking at the occluding level, for those patients who eventually develop a bleeding, and this is their level for people who did not ble develop bleeding, the level is very low. And so if, but some patients come in, come in very late, we later on uh, take the blood as well. And again, shows that the level of the occluding fragment is a remarkable uh, indicator uh, and for whether the patient eventually will develop um, bleeding or not. So currently, and we have done the initial study, that's the exciting data. We are waiting for the uh, uh, pending NH grant, which to conduct, to, con to propose a larger, and here we're talking about 160, proposed 160 patient study. And uh, the whole technology is backed by four different um, uh, patterns. So we are looking forward to look for partners and uh, to further develop the technology to take it to the market. I'll stop here. Thank you so much. Uh, Greg, you maybe unmute yourself. Thank you. you um, is there any other injuries that um, that this being able to detect that the blood brain barrier, barrier is damaged, like ischemic stroke, are there any other injuries or disease states where this could be used to detect uh, blood um, brain damage? You see, the, the, the so-called occluding are, are highly enriched in the brain. So other parts of the body low level, level is much lower. So you don't normally detect them. On the other hand, in addition to stroke, one, it's a, one possibility is a traumatic brain injury. If someone has a traumatic brain injury and cause major issue in the brain and the blood brain barrier may also uh, kind of damage the compromised and therefore it, it could be used as well for that purpose. 